Namaste, I'm Acharya Pratishtha and I welcome you to Bharat Yoga English YouTube channel. Well, these days people are practicing yoga and they are learning, they are practicing, but one element is missing. And I realized that when I received several questions from our viewers, Acharya ji, what time can I do this? Acharya ji, uh, can I do this before meal or it has to be done after? Uh, can I do this after meal or it has to be done before meal? Acharya ji, uh, what shall I wear while doing this? So that was the moment I realized that it's very, very important that we should know the basics of yoga abhyas, of yoga practice. <music> Though for yoga it is said, khavat, peevat, sovat, jagat, neeku, visar nahi jai. We have to be a 24-hour yogi. There is no specific time to be a yogi, to do yoga. Your breath should be yogic breath. Your life should be yogic life. Your food should be yogic food. But when we talk about yoga abhyas, yoga practice, there are certain rules and regulations. There are certain do's and don'ts that we need to understand. There are certain um, discipline that we need to follow. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what are these rules that one shall follow. And we must take care of these rules while doing our everyday yoga abhyas. So very first rule is very, very simple. Guru Padishta Margena Yoga Meva Samabhyaset. Practice of yoga abhyas shall be done in presence of a master. Never practice without the proper guidance. So it's very, very important that you have a guru and let your guru teach you. So now you, you are associated with Moksha and you learn it from me or you learn it from other Acharyas of Moksha But it's very important that we must have a guru who guides you what is right, what is wrong, you are doing it correctly or not. Second is that uh, to practice yogic kriyas uh, in the early morning uh, in a place open to sky and in an airy room. It's very, very important that we do not practice yoga abhyas in a closed room or in an air-conditioned room until and unless you uh, have uh, an extreme climate condition where you cannot perform it in open uh, space. Otherwise, it's always preferable that you practice yoga abhyas in an open space. Now, the best practice is in fresh air in a quiet and hygienically clean place that suits yogic concentration and awareness. Now, Third point is very, very important that one should be lighted stomach while doing yoga abhyas. So when I say lighted stomach, it's very important that you practice yoga abhyas either in the uh, morning, early morning. Uh, once you're done with your stool discharge, your stomach is absolutely empty. Then you practice yoga abhyas or if you're doing it during daytime, there should be three hours gap after your meal till your yoga practice. So let's say if you're do taking your meal at 1 p.m. So... 4 p.m. After 4 p.m. you should do yoga abhyas. So three hour gap is very, very important after your meal and your yoga practice. Um, next is that it's very important that um, you clear your bowel before yoga abhyas. If you, are, uh, you have not done stool discharge, it is not recommended that you, you do yoga practice. It's better that you uh, watch out my video on uh, how to clear your stomach in the morning, how to have proper stool discharge in the morning and then you do yoga practice. It's very important that we wear some comfortable clothes while you practice. Um, uh, it's not recommended that you, you wear tight clothes or you wear uh, other than cotton or suti or khadi hmm, clothes. So it's, it's better that you wear cotton clothes which soothes your body, which soothes your skin and your clothes should be loose and comfortable and better and best is to wear sun color clothes uh, like you see me wearing uh, yellow, orange or white sun colors are best, light colors are best. Uh, very important, never keep a pen in your pocket when you do yoga abhyas or never wear uh, some uncomfortable jewelry or anything belt or any such thing which can harm you during your practice if you're wearing a belt remove it if you're wearing a tie remove it if you are wearing some um, um, necklaces or anything which can harm you during your practice we need to or you're keeping a pen in your pocket remove it 
Um, prefer practicing yoga after taking morning bath. It will save time as well as possible risk of sickness due to exposure. So it is always recommended you take your morning shower and then you take bath. Now, what is the science behind it? I have already shared it in one of my Friday episodes of uh, um, Indian Culture Facts with Acharya Pratishtha. You can uh, watch out that episode. Yoga aims at liberation from bondages to so remove belt, tie, wristwatch, pen, comb, hairpins, etc. to avoid risk of injury and feel the free flow of breath during yoga practice as I just now told you. So what am I reading? I'm reading um, my own book. So you can order this book uh, from Amazon and even from our ashram. So it is yoga for healthy life and all these things are given in detail in my book. So from there I'm reading it. Male practitioners should wear langot supporter during practice and female practitioners should avoid yogic kriyas during menstruation. So this question comes up so rapidly Acharyaji during my periods, my monthly periods, shall I practice yoga or not? It is recommended that at least for first two days you can take rest but at least for first day don't do anything. From first two days don't do anything from third day you can do just mild breathing practices after third day you can continue with your regular practice now a sadhana should be done on mat kusha mat cotton sheet or woolen blanket according to the requirement of the weather body should not be in direct contact with floor earth during yoga practice sometimes i have seen people just straight away lie down on the floor and they just start doing yoga practice and even uh, chemical, uh, chemically prepared mats are not uh, recommended. You take a kusha mat or you take a cotton mat. And even if you are taking that um, chemically prepared mat, you put a cotton sheet on it or a, a cotton towel on it. So that is more hygienic and never do it straight away on the floor because of the gravitational force and because, because of that your energy levels would go down. So it is not recommended. Now don't suppress natural calls during your practice. If you feel like um, um, gas is passing, you feel like going for stool discharge in between your practice, you feel like going for urine discharge in between your practice, never suppress that. Because when you do yoga bhyas, if you have acidity, your gas will pass. Let that pass. So don't hold any of your natural call. Relaxation is must after each and every practice because our objective is not to make you tired but to rejuvenate you. So after each and every practice make sure that you relax. You must have seen all my students know that after each practice we say relax, aram, take three seconds break and then re restart your practice. Discharge of urine should be done about 15 minutes uh, after yogic exercises or before eating anything after yoga practice is over. So once your yoga practice is over, make sure that you go uh, in your washroom uh, and you discharge your urine and then only eat anything. Asana and pranayam should be done slowly, rhythmically, comfortably and without any jerk with full concentration and devotion. You know, generally people think dhyan is something different, pranayam is something different, asana is something different. But when I say inhale and lift up your arms, so it's not that only body is moving, even your respiration. Then I say, hold your breath for six seconds. You're holding your breath for six seconds. Then I say, exhale and bring your hands down and concentrate on your spine. Concentrate on your breath. So physical movement, respiratory practice and even dhyan, everything is happening together. So it's not that you put some loud music, you're singing and then you're doing yoga or you're talking to people and you're doing yoga. This is not the right way. This can harm you. Be quiet. Be stable, follow all these rules and then you can put some light chanting of home or some meditational music but concentrate on your breath, concentrate on different organs even while practicing asana. Now breathe through nose, not through your mouth while practicing unless instructed otherwise in few yogic kriyas. Now just remember I always say in my class and my session nose is to breathe, mouth is to eat. I would have said mouth is to speak but in the class mouth is not to speak. So breathe through your nose. When it's about yoga, breathe through your nose. Until and unless your guru tells you for this practice, you have to breathe through your mouth. Last, most important practice is to leave the entire world outside the yoga room. All worldly tensions, worries, workloads and in fact the relationships and attachments as well. And try to be with yourself only during yoga practice. Now, uh, when, you, when, when anyone comes to my class, I just tell them you might be a senior officer, you might be something really big, but for me, you are just my student. So leave your ego outside this yoga 
all because here it's just you and Paramatma. So let your spirit, let your spiritual enlightenment happen. This is the time which you are devoting to yourself, whether it be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, one and a half hour. This is your time, just your time. Do not let anyone enter this time. So give this time to yourself. These very simple rules and regulations we must, must, must follow if we want to practice yoga. And if you have any other question, any other doubt, do not hesitate to contact us. Stay happy, stay healthy, lots of love, light and blessings for all of you. If you have not subscribed to Bharat Yoga English, do that and share it with your loved ones. Hari Om.